Growth means beefing up your marketing resources in order to increase your website's revenue. For example, bringing people onto the team, increasing your ad budget, adding more products. Whereas scaling is about significantly increasing your website's revenue with only incremental increases to your cost, i.e. you're getting way more out than you're putting in. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds way cooler to me. So that's what we're gonna look at today. With examples and practical actionable tips are plenty. If you're gonna scale your website's revenue, you need to start from a solid foundation, i.e. your website needs to be working really hard for you. It's really difficult to overstate this, but if all of the digital marketing that you're doing is designed to drive traffic towards your website and your website sucks at converting that traffic, then all of this stuff that you're doing is wasted. Now, if we're gonna be running a scalable digital marketing campaign, typically we're looking for your website to do three things. Firstly, it has to look good. Looks aren't everything, but people are judging the quality of your business and the quality of your products on the look of your website. So we need to make sure that we're playing that game and you have an attractive, well-designed website. Secondly, it needs to convert your target audience into customers by explaining exactly what you do and offering them a very sensible and attractive next step. Thirdly, your website needs to be optimized for search, meaning it's getting you found on Google. Now, if you've got something that covers those basics, scaling is about looking for areas to tweak and optimize in order to generate much better performance. So some of the areas that we're gonna be analyzing here is the above the fold section, i.e. the piece of the site that you can see before you scroll down the page. This is really important for setting first impressions and calling out your target audience. Secondly, your calls to action. How attractive are they as a next step that you want your visitors to take? And thirdly, your conversion rate optimization. Are we doing things like handling potential objections and demonstrating credibility through social proof? So let's look at our first example. Dream, plan, achieve. Choir inspires teams to dream higher, reach beyond potential, bring team members together and celebrate success. Get started, it's free. All right, I'll let you into a little secret. In the new Exposure Ninja Tone of Voice guidelines, we've said that we're not gonna be cruel or nasty about websites that we review, even though it's really entertaining when we are. So I'm gonna be really, really nice about this. I don't know what this business does. There you go, Dale and Jess, how did I do? Put yourself in the minds of the customers here. What does this business do? Maybe if we scroll down, we'll find out what this business does. We've got some logos of great brands here. We've got infinite nested lists, Kanban boards, okay. Maybe this is project management software, dynamic timeline, translate data into actions. Okay, I'll put us all out of our misery. We are project management software. Now, I don't know how long it took the creative agency to come up with these three particular words or how many arguments went over the particular font height of these letters or how long the SLT went to their cabin in the woods to figure out that actually, no, we're not project management software. We're here to enrich the lives of our customers. But how? By saving them time, by enabling their goals, their hopes and dreams. <laughs> Trouble is, if you're not hooking your audience immediately when they land on the website by showing them that you are exactly what they're looking for, it doesn't matter if it's free if people don't know what they're signing up for. Contrast this with the Visor website. Now, the Visor website says, share Gantt charts that stakeholders can trust. Share roadmaps. The spreadsheet-inspired workplace that stays in sync with Jira. Got it. I'm not the target audience, but I know exactly who the target audience is because they have clearly explained exactly what they do. They've got fantastic credibility signals above the fold. They've got the logos and then they've got the benefits of why you would use them. Delight stakeholders and save time. They're talking their target customer's language. Now we've got more videos on CRO and how to optimize your website for conversion. So I'm not gonna go into more detail here, but suffice to say, you need to be hitting your audience straight between the eyes as soon as they land on your website. If you're gonna be able to build the basis of a scalable digital marketing campaign. The next foundational element that we need before we start scaling anything is to make sure we've got the tracking and analytics in place to give us a good read of exactly what's going on. So you need to make sure you've got an analytics platform like GA4, the world's most confusing and horrible but ubiquitous analytics platform. But you also need to make sure that you understand the data inside it. We've got a bunch of training and videos on how to use GA4, which you can see if you click the link in the description. One word of warning with the analytics and data is not to get hung up on particular vanity metrics. Make sure you understand what's really important to the business and ideally track the metrics that most tightly correlate with the business's goals. For example, when we're working on client campaigns at Exposure Ninja, we like to think about the number of leads and the revenue that we're generating. 
Sometimes people get obsessed with a particular number like, oh, our average revenue per user is down 36% year on year. Yeah, but we increased your total purchases by 93% and your revenue 186%. So yeah. Now your analytics and your data is gonna be absolutely crucial as you start scaling campaigns because it's gonna highlight the areas where you can get the most leverage. For example, here I am deep in the analytics for one particular client. And we can see in this table, we can see the page that visitors are landing on. We can see the number of conversions that are happening in the session from that landing page. And we can see the conversion rate. We can also see the revenue generated by that particular page. Now, if we go all the way down here, we can see that there are two pages here which actually have relatively similar amounts of traffic, but their performance is not the same. This one here is converting at 0.07% and has generated no direct revenue, whereas this one is converting at 1.63% and has generated 15,000 pounds worth of revenue in the same time period. Now to scale this, what we would do is look at the page that is underperforming and compare it to the page that is performing really well. We then take those learnings from the page that is performing really well and see if we can apply them to all of the other pages on the site that are getting low conversion rates and generating a small amount of revenue. Okay, so let's assume that you've got your website sorted and it's ready for the big time. It's ready for some scale. Let's talk about some of the different scaling tactics. Now, one of my favorites, and this is a bit of a superpower that you can use across all of the digital marketing channels that you're using, is making sure the stuff that you're posting on different channels, whether it's on your website or on your social media or via email, actually resonates with your target audience. Now, in order to do that, of course, you need to understand exactly who your target audience is and you need to profile them really deeply. But let me just show you a couple of contrasting examples here to illustrate why this is so important. Now, Figma and Envision are two different design tools. Fundamentally, they started from the same place, but their fortunes diverged significantly. Figma has grown and become huge, whilst Envision failed to get traction and has been sold off. Let's have a look at how well each of these tools understood their customers. So here I am on the Figma LinkedIn page, and I've got to say this thing is a masterpiece. Figma understands its target audience so well. The language that Figma talks in is very sort of colloquial. It's very friendly with designers. It uses code. It talks about devs rather than developers, for example. Figma recognizes that the handoff between design and dev shouldn't be called a handoff. You know, all this type of stuff. It gets it. It's on the inside. The language is perfect. The topics are great. There's geeky in-jokes. They're sharing live demos in their feed and they're getting loads of traction. So the roadmap has been trailblazed. We know what Envision's gonna be doing then, right? Unfortunately though, what we see is just endless self-promotion. Yes, it's all on-brand self-promotion, it all looks consistent, but it is still just self-promotion. Their audience is designers, they're cool people, but this content just isn't cool. Now, I'm not just talking about the amount of content that they're posting or the number of followers each one has got, but it's the tone of that content and it's recognizing that Figma deeply understands its target audience because it is its target audience, whereas Envision is sort of outside of its target audience. Any time that you spend getting to understand your target audience and actually talking to them, I think is time really well spent. You can't replicate this. Yes, you can look at the data inside analytics and you can see which demographics am I most resonating with, but actually understanding, talking to, and preferably meeting your target customers is such a great way to make sure that all of your marketing content across all of your channels is really well aligned. And if you don't have this level of knowledge about your audience, then it can be really difficult to resonate deeply with them. When we're working with a client on a branding project, we'll actually talk to their customers so that we can understand who these customers are, what their drivers, their motivations, and their fears are. Because we know that when we design the branding for that client, we're gonna get a much better response from their customers if we understand who those people are. The next scaling strategy is checking for leaky buckets. This is particularly common amongst marketing managers that are super stressed, trying to manage or oversee loads of different channels and they might not understand each of those channels deeply themselves. Let me give you a very recent example which typifies this. One client that we were doing a review of their Google Ads campaign for was spending about £20,000 a month, which was a reasonably large chunk of their overall marketing ad spend. But they were losing loads of this budget unknowingly by targeting the wrong keyword match types, by double counting some conversions, and not tracking other conversions at all. Now, it's not their fault. This was just one of the channels that they were trying to oversee. Now, lots of businesses make this type of mistake. This was just one of the marketing channels that they were trying to oversee. And the truth be told, they didn't have the time or the experience 
to know that this was a leaky bucket. But the good news for this particular poor overstretched marketing manager is that they could save more than they're losing by hiring an agency like Exposure Ninja to manage that account for them. Fixing up the holes on that leaky bucket would mean that they could either reduce their total ad spend or generate many, many, many more leads for the same budget. And by the way, if you want us to take a look at your Google ad campaign or any of your other digital marketing channels, then head over to the Exposure Ninja website and request your free website and marketing review. If you go to exposureninja.com forward slash review, you'll see a questionnaire that you can fill in to apply for your review. Now these reviews are completely free and we'll take a look at all of the digital marketing channels that you're running and we'll recommend things that you can do to improve their performance and scale your revenue over the next six to 12 months. Now, not everybody is eligible for those reviews, so you do need to apply. If you're not eligible, the good news is that we'll send you something juicy instead or connect you with one of our partner agencies. So head over to ExposureNinja.com forward slash review to request your free website and digital marketing review today. Now, go, go, go. You can pause. I'll be here when you get back. All right, welcome back. All right, it's Exposure Ninja, you know the deal. Let's talk about how to scale your SEO. Now, when we're working on campaigns, sure, we're doing some growth stuff. We're producing new pages, new information, new content on your website. But sometimes scaling can be about identifying the pages that could be doing really well, but currently they suck. So here I am over in SEMrush, which by the way, you can get a free trial of at thankyouninjas.com. Well, and what I've done is I've put the website address in here so I can see all of the different keywords that this site and the pages on the site are ranking for. I've just added a couple of filters because I don't want to see pages that are ranking for branded terms. And I also don't want to see any of the pages from the community or the forum section on the site. Now I'm looking for untapped, wasted potential. One of my favorite ways to find this is just to click on the little positions filter. And you can either choose positions four to 10. So these are keywords that the site is ranking for outside the first top three positions or outside page one. So let's just have a quick click on four to 10 because if we can move a keyword from position four to position one, we're gonna significantly increase the amount of traffic that page is generating. So what can we see? Well, I can see, for example, that we've got this page here, the color wheel page, which is ranking position nine and is generating about 6,000 visits per month for Figma. But this is a search term that has 673,000 searches per month. Now the intent isn't massively high. Somebody searching for color wheel probably isn't gonna be signing up for Figma immediately. But if we took a keyword like wireframe, which Figma's currently ranking position six for with this page, Actually, that is the sort of term that maybe someone searching for wireframing might want UI design software, so could be a potential Figma customer. So what would we do with this page? Well, we'd analyze it against all of its competitors on Google. We'd see what we could do to improve the content to better match the searcher's intent. We'd have a look at the calls to action to see if they are resonating with people that are likely to be coming through from a very general search term like wireframe. And of course we build some links, we maybe do some digital PR around wireframing, see if we could piggyback on any news stories about wireframing with something creative to get this page some links and increase its visibility on Google. Another SEO scaling strategy that we talk about on this channel a fair bit is funnel focused SEO. And what this is about is basically thinking about your marketing funnel and thinking about the different stages that a potential customer goes through all the way from awareness where they're researching your topic and they don't really know what the potential solutions are all the way through to you know working out what the potential solutions are becoming solution aware rather than just problem aware and eventually choosing different options and researching them a bit more deeply before they make the decision to buy having different types of content on your site targeting people at different stages of the funnel can be a great way to scale your SEO because you get to influence them as they're moving down that funnel towards that purchase. If you're a business that has physical locations, then local SEO can be a fantastic way to scale revenue through your website as well. And we've done this with lots of our clients that are either regional or local and have different physical locations. One audiology clinic that we helped scale from three to eight locations worked with us really closely. So when they had a new location that they were about to open, we would start doing local SEO work to get them visibility in that town or city before they opened their new clinic. That meant that when they did open the doors, they weren't having their staff just sitting around waiting for the phone to ring. They were already generating leads and generating interest. 
This meant that they could scale up much more quickly because each new location generated revenue more quickly than it would if we'd have just sort of waited until these locations were launched and then worked out what we were gonna do with them. And this type of local SEO can also influence your expansion strategy as well. For example, you can look at local competition in different regions. You can look at how the cost per click for your target keywords varies in different towns and cities to work out where the most affluent customers are and where competition is lowest for the amount of potential business that's out there for you. The final scaling strategy we're gonna talk about is one of my favorites. A lot of businesses think that once the sale is made, that's it, marketing's job is over. Not so fast. If you can increase your customer lifetime value or the number of purchases that the average customer makes per year, that's another great way of scaling because getting a customer is usually fairly expensive whereas getting that person to buy over and over again is much more economical so this can be a great scaling strategy one of the best ways to do this is through email and sms automation and we've got a fantastic email team here at exposure ninja that does this for clients and we actually win quite a lot of awards for our crm and our email work now one example of a client that we've been doing this for is fabrics galore they're an independent fabric store uh, with an e-commerce platform and we did an amazing campaign for them which paid for itself in 15 days earning over 13 times return on investment in the first six months that the campaign was live now a couple of cool things a couple of cool elements to this campaign firstly we designed them some beautiful email templates that they could use for their follow-up sequences and their broadcast this is a really visual business and their target audience is very design oriented so we needed to make sure these email templates looked really good so that their email list was inspired to get creating and get buying. But we also recognized by understanding their target customers that we needed to offer these email subscribers and these purchasers a chance to sort of choose their own story in the emails that they're receiving. Some people who buy fabric are into dressmaking, some who buy fabric are into quilting, some are into furnishing. Now, if we sell someone who's into dressmaking, a bunch of fabrics for furnishing they're not going to be interested so we're going to see that open rate and that click-through rate and the purchase rate from those emails drop if we really want to build a scalable email marketing campaign then we need to tailor the content to that audience we needed to tailor each email to the interests of the particular recipient so what we did is build a preference center in one of their emails this allowed their email subscribers to basically choose what they wanted to receive emails about when they clicked on different options, we tagged them according to their choices. And that meant we could send them the right emails targeted at their interests and also their confidence level. This led to an average email open rate across all of the campaigns of about 46.7%, an average click-through rate of over 10%, and an average placed order rate of over 2%. So I hope you've enjoyed these ideas and examples on how to scale your website's revenue over the next year. If you want to find out how to triple the traffic that your website generates for you, check out this video. Until next time, see you soon.